How's it going, everybody? Uncanny Omar here with the legendary Mike Grell. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. That, I, I like the hat. That's nice. I used to have hair, and now I have a hat. But every convention I've seen you at, you have that awesome hat, so you always stand out. So I'm always like, that's, that's Mike Grell. That's because um, about oh, 15 or 20 years ago, I had my picture taken while I had my head down sketching, and the bulge back off the ball spot up here made it look like holy pictures <laughs> so so i put the hat on it's been on ever since well i just want to thank you for your time um yeah you how long have you been working in this comic industry i'm finishing up 50 years 50 years did you ever think like when you first started like how like you could see doing this for the rest of your life actually um yeah i I was, uh, at, at the beginning, I was sort of passing through on my way to doing a comic strip. Okay. But uh, I'm, I'm perfectly satisfied with this. Uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. Well, I know before I started rolling the camera, I was just going on and on about how much I love your Green Arrow run. And it's amazing that now it's collected not only in trades, but also now in two Omnis. I would love to see Warlord, uh, Warlord get that treatment. That's one of my favorites, too, as a kid. Me too, actually. Uh, next year uh, will be the 50th anniversary of the Warlord, and I've been trying to persuade DC to do an omnibus edition for that. In fact, IDW has been pushing for it. Uh, they're producing uh, omnibus editions for DC, and they've been pushing for it for two years now, and they keep getting stalled because DC would rather see another Legion of Superheroes, whatever, and uh, to me, it's like, you know, it's not costing them anything to, to do it because uh, IDW is going to foot the bill for the publishing. It's, it just makes sense. 50, anniver 50 year anniversary. Come on. As one of my most wanted Omnis, that's, that would be amazing. And I know that a lot of my viewers, I, every year I do um, my most wanted DC Omni, my most wanted Marvel Omni. And that comes up just about every year how we as viewers and uh, how can we help to get, make that happen you you mentioned reaching out to dc but yeah yeah i would i would say definitely uh you have to contact their uh division that is in charge of doing the omnibus editions and things like that and the reprints uh but i would make noise make enough noise and maybe they'll pay attention well we can make some noise <laughs> we can make some noise, so if that's all it takes. Now, you also worked on uh, Shaman's Tears. Well, yes. that was your creator own. So, how is that different? Like, is is that you're in full control of? Like, hey, let's make a uh, a hardcover of that compared to like things that are unfortunately out of your control, like Green Arrow and Warlord. Right. I I don't have the ability to control that. So with uh, uh, books like uh, Sable. Uh, we have the new omnibus edition on the table here, um, the, the first omnibus edi edition. And where can people get where can people get this one? Uh, it will be offered through Diamond Distributors uh, for their, I believe, the May catalog, and it'll, it should be in stores, uh, I think, by July at the latest. And who who's the publisher on this one? I am, under my Master Stroke uh, Studios edition. This is beautiful. I like the dust jacket. It, it's nice. Uh, if you take the dust jacket off, it, it's even better. I may get a shot of that later. Yeah. I don't want to drop the book. Yeah. Um, um, the, 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 you, you mentioned Shaman's Tears. Yes. Um, we are in the process of, uh, in the beginning process, of doing a Shaman's Tears audio movie. Oh, really? Okay. They, they, don't, they don't like it when I say old-time radio show, right? I don't but, think that's a... I don't think that's the thing most people would understand these days. Right, right. But basically, it's an audio movie with full song, full orchestration. Professional actors is being done in conjunction with native voices uh, under the direction of Delana Studi, uh, who's the creative director of the Autry Museum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're, getting, we're using native talent and uh, right down to the musicians, the, the music uh, is, is going to be all, all native. And uh, 
it's it's just an incredible process here. Uh, th we have we have a wish list of, of people that we want to get on board. Uh, personally, I'm hoping Delana Studi can persuade her father Wes to take part in it. Oh, that would be awesome. It would. It would. So, is that um, with that project? Could we see? A big collection of shamans tears, uh, tears kind of like this, yes, the Johnson. You oh. Yes, you will. Awesome, and that would be available through Diamond again, as published uh, by. First, first we're going to offer it on a, a Kickstarter. Oh, so, okay. So, uh, people can uh, jump in right off of that and get the full package. There will be everything from trading cards to uh, we're working on a game module, um, uh, in conjunction with the folks who do Coyote and Crow. Okay. Yeah, we're we're gonna piggyback onto their game system. So uh, I have to ask a little bit about that then. Okay, with with that book, uh, what would that include? Shaman Steers, like the the hardcover. Oh, it, it'll include the entire run of Shaman Steers. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So and, what... and, and by the way, if you get your hands on the various issues singly, issue number zero comes last. Yeah, yeah, because I because it them. yeah it's it's a prequel and it's full of spoilers. So just remember, issue number zero comes last. And when is that kick? Do you know when that Kickstarter is going to go live? Uh, not at this moment, uh, but it's probably going to be before fall. Now that's what I love hearing. I love that you're you're getting that out there. You're getting uh, the John Sable out there. Now we just need to work on Warlord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to, uh, one of my favorite memories about um, talking to you many years ago, oh my gosh, it's been 20 some years probably, uh, was, we were talking about Green Arrow and I remember you telling me that, you know, people were upset about some of the violence that you were showing on that book and you were like, I don't know what the hell they're so upset about, I'm just getting these stories out of the headlines from the newspapers. That's true. Um, the, the, the one that got the heaviest criticism was a story about uh, uh, a girl who was sold into the sex trade business and uh, winds up crucified. Well, that's a true story. That that actually happened. A, a, a gang from Canada sold her to a gang in Florida. She tried to get away, and as uh, a re retribution, they, they crucified her. Uh, it's terrible stuff, but it it's real stuff and i I've, I've been accused of being a misogynist and nothing could be further from the truth if if you ever met my wife you would understand my deep love and, and respect for strong women well even even if you read your run on green arrow you could tell like you you love those strong women characters cuz they show up throughout the book Ab absolutely um the, the other criticism that I got was in uh, The Longbow Hunters, when, yep. when I kicked First it off. Uh, there's a scene where Dino Lance, the Black Canary, winds up strung up to a, a forklift in a warehouse. Yep. And uh, um, she's, she's already been beaten and battered, and the bad guy's got a knife in his hand, and he's about to do something really nasty to her. And... Uh, people actually read more into that than they should have. Or maybe I just underestimated the negative nature of the human spirit because I, I did that specifically because I needed to bring about a change in Oliver Queen. I needed to bring him from the point where he had, in, in the previous um, iconography, he had sworn in one of Denny O'Neill's stories yeah. that he would never take another human life. So I had to put him in a position where he's got a choice to make. And it is a choice. Um, I'd already demonstrated that he could have shot the knife out of the guy's hand. Mm -hmm. No problem at all for him. But instead he shot him square through the heart because the son of a bitch had it coming. Oh, man. I, I, I remember those stories, like reading them for the first time. And one of the things I really appreciated about that run is you were one of the first writers that I remember getting into your work of Green Arrow and a little bit of, in, in Warlord, too, that it wasn't 
dialogue heavy. You let the artwork do a lot of the storytelling. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing. It was just, it's so much, and I think that's the way new writers write these days, right? Less dialogue, no caption boxes, with more artwork. But you were way ahead of that. You were doing that back then in the 80s. I thought that was awesome. One of the things that I learned uh, from, from Denny O'Neill and also from my time on the Tarzan comic strip, you have text and subtext, okay? Never, ever talk about what's going on visually in the panel. Let the, let the artwork carry part of the story. Let the dialogue carry another part of the story. Yes, that's, that's some great advice. And I think that's the way modern comics are written, right. too. And, and learn the value of silence. There, there, there's great value in silence. It, it's just a, a beat. You can create a pause in in dialogue. When when uh, you read a movie script, an actor is given a scene, and all of his dialogue is written right through the end of that scene, or that of until he stops talking, mm -hmm. and it's up to him to figure out the pauses and the breaks. You, we don't have that luxury in comics. You have to break it up into balloons to, to create the pauses in, in the dialogue or in, in a case like my, my favorite example. Uh, if you have a, a block of copy that says, I loved a woman who promised she'd never leave me, she died. You don't run that all in one. If you do, I loved a woman, I once loved a woman and balloon two, she swore she'd never leave me. And then put a beat panel in there, silence. Yeah. Come back to that same character, but closer in. She died. That's powerful. Yeah, that's good storytelling. That's good storytelling. I want, I want to thank you for your time. And thank You're you welcome. for thank your you. run of Green Arrow and Warlord. Hopefully we'll get that made. And I can't wait to check that out. Uh, and you said, I'll take, a, I'll take a little shot of this, too, like the internal artwork uh, here so people can see it. That's great. That it's, this is oversized. It's 9 by 12, uh, uh, bigger than it's ever been printed uh, anywhere before. And we've gone in and remastered the, the color. Yeah, it may catalog of diamond, right? Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, sir. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody.